Yes, guys, welcome back to Subtle Media. Today I'm joined by the cowboy himself, Mam Sailor. Mam, we're here at the open workout. We just saw JJ training. He's looking in incredible shape. He looks brilliant in the ring. What are your thoughts? Um, I'm excited, man. He's really ready. He's prepared. It's the biggest test he's had to date. And um, Saturday night, uh, we'll, see, we'll see what he's made of. The first guy to beat a pro boxer with a winning record in, uh, in our scene, so. This is true, this is true, technically. The... Speaking of which, Jake Paul, he, 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 had some he put out some tweets the other day. Did you see them, what did you think? Which ones, he, I mean, he always puts out some garbage, so, so. So these tweets were referencing misfits. You make reference yourself. Yeah. What, what mean, did you think of them? Honestly, so he's saying he won't fight KSI because we have a business that's based on entertainment for content creators to have a platform to inspire the youth to box. Makes no sense because the contract we sent to Jake Paul was not anything to do with tag teams, it was not anything to do with anything um, WWE, as he says, which his own brother's in the WWE and is an amazing athlete in the WWE. He, he was in the WWE as well, he yeah. came out with Logan. Look, the guy's always a hypocrite, he's always full of shit. Um, I, I don't believe he wants to fight JJ, that's all there is to it really. At this point, let's move on, you know? Do you think he's scared of yes. JJ? hundred yeah. percent. I think he's scared of losing to JJ because the consequences of that are way too dire for his future. You know? This is true. This is true. I mean, Jake Paul, he's built himself up. He's fighting. He's now fighting Nate Diaz. What do you make of that fight against Nate Diaz? I love Nate Diaz. I think he's such an amazing UFC, former UFC fighter, an MMA guy that's amazing. His jiu-jitsu is great. His combination of ground and stand-up works really well. As a boxer in the boxing ring at the tail end of his career, sounds familiar. Jake has a pattern. I mean, am I lying here? He fights people who are between 40 and 50 years old, usually, okay? I know Joe's 40. It's the first time JJ's fought someone that age. But again, this guy's got a 9-0 record, former champ, this, that. <laughs> and, and, and to be honest, it's different. I'm not putting JJ to the same standard as J Jake Paul. You know why? Because Jake Paul says he wants to be a Hall of Famer. Jake Paul says he wants to be a, f uh, a future world champion, okay? He does say these things. So if he says that, why the fuck is he fighting retired MMA guys? Because it's the only people he can beat. He fought a boxer, much respect. He fought a boxer, a good boxer in Tommy Fury. Amazing last name, being Tyson's brother, all of that stuff that comes with it. He came up short because he's not ready to fight a proper boxer. JJ is. Now he is. Jake wanted to fight JJ when he was fresh off his music tour because he's an opportunistic prick. He doesn't want fairness. He doesn't want it to be even. He wants to have 200 pounds and have JJ at 180. He doesn't want things to be on a level playing field because he knows he'll lose. And honestly, that's a testament to the lack of confidence the boy has. He's a Mickey Mouse kid and he's going to be on Disney if he ever fights a real boxer again. No world titles waiting for him and no Hall of Fame, except for being the Mickey Mouse of boxing if they make an award for that at some point. The Mickey Mouse of boxing. That, that, that's a new one, that's a new one. Man, you, you said a lot of words there. Donald just Duck, actually. Donald Duck. Yeah. The Donald Duck of that's the thumbnail. It's just Jake and Donald Duck. That's it. You should really, you <laughs> promise you'll put that I up. I promise, I promise. Okay, I'll, send it, I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you, I promise. Okay. So you just said a lot of words just then. I want yeah. to rewind a bit to Nate Diaz. It's frustrating because, look, at the end of the day, you've got to respect the good things he's done. But then when he turns his attention and puts negativity on a product we've built yeah. that inspires kids on a daily basis, thank you Mams, thank you JJ, from parents, from kids, inspiring my kid not to be obese, no longer depressed, and he shits on that. I don't shit on what he's done for women's boxing. The difference is JJ and I actually give a shit about making the difference to the world. He just does it because it's a nice tagline to put in, but can't take away that he's done it. He's done a lot for women's boxing, okay? Maybe he'll get into the Hall of Fame for that and being a duck, but on the whole, if he wants to turn his attention to my fucking cowboy hat instead of his contract with JJ, 
then yeah, I'm gonna have some negative words for him too, and that's all there is to it. And I'm sick of these fucking people. Oh, you're so unprofessional, Mems. Stay behind the scenes. Fuck you. Did Vince McMahon stay behind the scenes? Did Dana White stay behind the scenes? Go fuck yourself. And if you want to have your own promotion and stay behind the scenes, then go and fucking do that. I've worked hard and I can do what I want. And you know what? I'm passionate about this. And I know that I'm coming from a place of wanting to help and do great things and provide entertainment. If you don't like it, don't watch. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Again, you just said a lot of words. Uh, I wanna, when you've created Misfits, now you have a background in music and the music industry and you've helped JJ. Entertainment, yeah. Entertainment, right, my bad. You've helped JJ massively in that industry. What, do you feel like your career's been a series of events leading up to the inevitable development of Misfits Boxing? My what? Crea my creativity. So do you feel like your career, you've, you've accomplished so many things in your career, well, it's built up to, I, to where lucky, Misfits yeah, because when I was young, when I was a young man, from 14 years old, got, got my first job at 13 or 14 in an antique shop, had to take two trains to and a bus to get there, hustle. Then I got a job selling flowers at the pond, right? So I'd go in early morning, sell flowers, go to school, do all the shit I did, go door to door sales, all the graft I did. I never took a day off and I always became the best at what I did because I did it with enthusiasm. All right, and I never quit and I had aspirations. I didn't say I want to be a flower seller for the rest of my life. Yeah. I didn't say I want to be a waiter for the rest of my life or a bouncer at a nightclub, which I did. I didn't want to do that for the rest of my life, yeah? But when I was doing it, I did it with all my fucking heart. And I did it to the best of my ability with optimism, enthusiasm and discipline. Because when you come in with that energy, you're gonna attract situations and opportunities because there's a kid called Dan. Reminds me a lot of how KSI, KSI's mindset. Do you think you having that kind of motivation, working as hard as you do, do you think that's what you brought you and JJ together? It's two things. For me personally, it's optimism and discipline. Optimism no matter what your situation. When you're a waiter, be the best fucking waiter you can. Bring a smile to your customers' faces. That creates conversation and opportunity. You know, discipline. Make sure you wake up every morning, exercise, meditate, take care of your health, do the things, give back. You know what makes you happy? Giving back. Don't have to post it on your Instagram. You can go to a soup kitchen, you can go to a, a charity, work, scrub, scrub people's backs in an old folks home, whatever it is that is selfless. That will, you know how we get depressed more and more after the pandemic, depression rates went up, people weren't able to do things like that. And I, I boxing, this right here, this saves lives, it saves you from going into spiraling into depression. I'm very passionate about the things we do to, to inspire people and to make them happy. And I think I think that's that's what it is. If you success, you say success, success is one thing, happiness. You can't be happy without your health. You can't. Health is very important. You can't be happy if you're bored. So don't be bored. Fill your time up with things that make you happy. That, my friend, is success. Money comes. If you make your goal, oh, let me make my, I know plenty of fucking miserable billionaires. I really do. I'd, I don't, I'd rather be a happy billionaire than a miserable billionaire. So knowing things that make me happy, including being of service to people. Yes, I can be a wanker on Twitter and joke around, but in real life, when you're able to help people, when you've got, when I've got my daughter and I, you know, like, she's, she's an artist and I see what she's doing um, and I can help that situation and that, that hits. When I've got my animals and I see a horse that won't give you its face because it's been abused so much and it runs away from you. And then six months later, it's following me around and licking my ear and that, my friend, makes you happy. That's like success. That money facilitates some of that happiness because you have the comfort and luxury of being able to have freedom to travel first class to buy nice things but if you think that those things are what makes you happy you're in for a rude awakening when you make money because it doesn't you've got to have the fundamentals covered mams i'm inspired good i hope so i, I really am wow that's you're a nice I, kid. You've always got good energy as well. Keep it up, man. Whatever thank you. Are, thank you. Of course, man. I mean, I love Misfits. This this whole thing is absolutely insane. Like every event, I'm always excited to come I to. Can't this tell one. You how much I appreciate you guys' support and and everyone watching as well. 
um, for watching this, for supporting, for for being a part of this little universe that's only going to grow. We're so grateful. So. Mr. Mams, what you've created is incredible. Misfits one day is going to be the face of boxing, I believe it. Boxing entertainment. It's going to be boxing entertainment. Yeah. Uh, my final question for you, it's been a long interview. Yeah, yeah. When can we see you in the ring? <laughs> You'll see me on Saturday. I always get in the ring. And no, no that's, not what, that's not what I mean, Mams. What's, when are we going to see you lace up? We saw you training on Twitter. I saw a clip of you. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, if uh, the thing is, I, I work about 16 to 18 hours a day. So... Yeah, that's, I can imagine fit and training between Yeah, that. I mean, listen, um, I was planning on taking a holiday. If I have to do a camp instead of the holiday, if it's the right fight and someone pisses me off enough, you never know. Joe Weller, if you're watching, oh, this Joe, man... Leave him alone, he's a nice <laughs> fella. He doesn't want to fight. And he's a nice kid, by the way. Like, I haven't honestly, met him yet. I, haven't. I actually think he gets, a lot, he gets a lot of shit online unnecessarily. Yes, he was a bit of a dickhead when I met him, but honestly, I've been a bit of a dickhead at times with different people in different situations, so we're all human. I don't think he deserves any shtick. Of course, if he said, yo, let's actually run it in the ring, of course, it would be my pleasure to do that. But... I have no beef with Mr. Weller. And honestly, let's respect the fact that him and Theo put this thing together in the beginning, which evolved into where it is. And if we do ever get a Jake KSI fight, I would love Joe and Theo to be a part of that event. That would be absolutely insane. But people forget that Joe and Theo. Homage. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Mams, thank you so much. No